more extensive than the land and the islands and the sea between China and the land of the, of the Negroes are full of black. Here's a man who was traveled. He knew that the southeast part of Asia, which they call China in antiquity, and on into the Melanesian Islands and, and Papua New Guinea, all out in the South Pacific, was full of blacks. And this is what he's writing. He's putting all these people to the same class. And then, so this is, man, we talked about way before the Iron Model came on the scene. So we move on. We can see uh, a Petrie, Flinders Petrie, writing in his book, Religion and Conscience, talking about the ruling race of the Egyptians. He says the ruling race is akin to the type of people of Punk. I showed you Punk with those mountains in the interior of Africa. The divine land. It seems most probable that the dynastic Egyptians entered the Nile Valley at Coptos from the Red Sea. He goes on, he says there's a Mes Mesopotamian type there in Egypt also. He's digging up the archaeological finds here and the anthropological finds. He goes on to say, thirdly, there's a coarse type of mulatto appearance, and as, and as it is certain anatomically that there is much Negro blood in the oldest Egyptians. We have one element of the mulatto in evidence. He's saying that, what is a mulatto? So he uses ambiguous terms. And what, and how much is much Negro blood? How much is that? Is that you? How much Negro blood do you have? as compared to a person in Zimbabwe, as a person in Uganda, as a person in Kenya. How much Negro blood do you have? Do you have much or do you have little? <laughs> See, you know, we got to start analyzing this psychopathic stuff these people have in these books. But nonetheless, he's seemingly admitting that at least two-thirds of the population that he was digging up here were clearly Africans. He had to say that because here's the findings the quarter Egyptian pre-dynastic tombs, and early dynastic tombs, you can see here, these are all Nubians, Nubians, the New Kingdom Nubians, C group Nubians, A group Nubians, B group Nubians, all Nubians, Abyssinians, the ancient Egyptians fit in the same category as all these Africans. Anatomically, they were the same. So this is what he was saying. So are we trying to latch on to somebody else's history, or are they trying to latch on to our history, is the question. We ain't done yet. So Bernard goes on and writes, if Europeans were treating blacks, this is Mark Bernard, his black Athena. If Europeans were treating blacks as badly uh, as they did throughout the 19th century, blacks had to be turned into animals, or at best, subhumans. The noble Caucasian was incapable of treating other fuel humans in such ways. This inversion sets the scene for the racial and main aspect of the Egyptian problem. If it had been scientifically proved that blacks were biologically incapable of civilization, how could one explain ancient Egypt, which was inconveniently placed on the African continent? There are two, or rather three, solutions. First was to deny that the ancient Egyptians were black. The second was to deny that the ancient Egyptians had created a true civilization. And the third was to make doubly sure by denying both. The last has been preferred by most 19th and 20th century historians. They just deny both of them. But we are all emotional and everything, and trying to make up a, a civilization, trying to make up some history for ourselves. We move on. He goes on to state, this is Bernard continuing, as I stated in the introduction, I believe that the Egyptian civilization was fundamentally African, that the African element was stronger in the Old and Middle Kingdom before the Hyksos invasion than in later time, than, later, than it later became. Furthermore, I am convinced that many of the most powerful Egyptian dynasties, which were based in Upper Egypt, the 1st, 11th, 12th, and 18th, were made up of pharaohs whom one could use to be called black. This is Bernard. Okay, he's a grandson of Alan Gardner who wrote the definitive work on Egyptian language. Now, he didn't have no choice. In fact, he left. <coughs> state, this is Bernal continuing. As I stated in the introduction, I believe that the Egyptian civilization was fundamentally African, and that the African element was stronger in the Old and Middle Kingdom before the Hyksos invasion than in later time, and than, later, than it later became. Furthermore, I am convinced that many of the most powerful Egyptian dynasties which were based in Upper Egypt, the 1st, 11th, 12th, and 18th, were made up of pharaohs whom one could use to be called black. This is Bernard, okay? He's a grandson of Alan Gardner who wrote the definitive work on Egyptian language. Now, he didn't have no choice. In fact, he even left out a few in between here. He got first, well, what about the 4th, and the 5th, and the 6th, and, and, and go on and on and on and on. We move on, but then, here's the first, here's the first king to unite Egypt, as a nation, King Mena, many are also called Norma, who the Cretes copied when they called uh, 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 the island of Manoa, uh, the Manoan civilization, was named after this cat, Mena, a Mena, 
You can see here, look at his nose and his lips here. No Charleston, Heston, you are better here. We move on back. He said the first, 11th, 12th, 18th, go on the seat. Here's a brother here from the 6th. He missed this one. This is Sahar, 6th Dynasty. This is the one that Brother James put on the cover of Stolen Legacy. Stolen Legacy. Look at this one, 11th Dynasty, Mentu Hotel. Saw it was black and said it was an artistic style. But the artist didn't bother to paint his eye black. He left his eyes white too, right? That's stuck in the back of the museum. In the back, that's right, brother. He's in the back of the museum, right? We're talking about 11th Dynasty here. Here's his, here's his daughter, his brother here. Here's his brother. I guess she's an artistic style too, with a white woman fanning her. Fanning her in the back. This is 11th Dynasty. We can't subject passing the reason. We're going to keep moving. We move on. We can see here's some women in this royal court. These are the women he was dating. Right here, look at the sisters here with the corn rolls. Look at their lips and their noses here. These are the women that he was dating in his royal court. Here's another sister here. Look at her. Very, very civilized act here. Look at her. You heard a British say sipping tea. Here she's sipping tea long before it was a Brit. Got a mirror here. Look at, got a mirror here to check out, to make sure that the, the sister's doing this right. And look at how she pins the braids here, holds the braid as she does it in layers, just like you sisters do it. And you braid your hair in layers. Go to the Maasai. Look at the Maasai. Look at the pen here. To hold the braid and braid it in layers. Same pen, same method. Look at the lips. Look at her lips. Ain't no different than the brothers here. Right off the wall. This is 11th Dynasty, 12th Dynasty. So Bernal didn't have no choice to say that it's usefully called black. Look at this, 11th and 12th Dynasty here. Look at the braids here. Look at the lips. And you know this lip go with this hairstyle. This hairstyle go with this lip. So you, if you want to find somebody, you want to find somebody to look like this, you can't go to, to uh, New Zealand. You can't go to, you got to go to South Central. Whether it's South Central Africa or South Central LA. You can see the brother here, right here in Africa, with the hairstyle, bro, like it came right off the wall. So we just being emotional here. We're trying to latch on to somebody else's civilization. Look at Alvin head here. Looks like Bob Marley standing here. Look at his broad Nathan's jaw and lip. I mean, Bernard had no choice when we started looking at these 11th and 12th dynastic period pharaohs. Okay, we ain't through. We just getting warm here. So here's Bernard's grandfather, uh, uh, Alan Gardner. He writes about Amosi Nefertari. Special uh, prominence was here given to Queen Amosi Nefertari. Uh, depicted for some unaccountable reason with a black com uh, continent, but also some some unaccountable reason. <laughs> the continents, well, that means demeanor or some aspect. He goes on to say, but also sometimes with a blue one, he tried to diffuse the thing. If she was the daughter of Kamosi, she would have had no black blood in her veins. And even more important, he goes on to some crazy. Thing. But here he is. You got one Egyptologist named Rawlinson who's writing before him who said a woman was black but an Ethiopian and not a nigger and here he is saying that the woman wasn't even black but she was black but she wasn't black but she was black but wasn't black. <laughs> this is called psychopathic racism. We move on. So here the sister, the queen sitting here black and in the museum in, in New York they said that the, the sister turned black over time. She the only one that's what it said. I was trying desperately to find a quote. I couldn't find it for this lecture. I, I hate it. I couldn't find it. If you can see it, I died when I saw that. She said she, she turned black over time. She's the only one in the picture to turn black over time. Time picked her to turn her black. But this is why, this is why they had to deny the sister. Because here you can see Omosi. Here you can see Omosi. And uh, a mostly Nefertari, where uh, she became the ancestors of the entire 18th dynastic period. And you can see Amenhotep the first, Amenhotep the second, Thotmose the first, on down to Hatshepsut, Thotmose the third, all the way down to King Tut Ankhamun and Akhenaten, Amenhotep the third, Queen T. All these kings and queens are going back to this woman, this black Ethiopian woman. So let's chase this thing. Here's Hatshepsut. You saw her name on there. They knocked her face out. But what did Hatshepsut do? Hatshepsut built this particular palace in the cliffs by a brilliant architect, Simba, who emulated Imhotep in many, res in many respects. And in this particular temple, she wrote about her ancestral land. And she sent an a expedition down to the land of Punt, as you see here, Punt, in Dead Central Outhouse in the cliffs. 
Because where everything has been tampered with and destroyed, unless you got these people themselves to come and tell you the secession and how they came, none of it is is reliable. None of it could be validated. So this is what someone assumes. They have no proof. Everything has been tarnished and ripped apart and screwed up. So there's no way this could be accurate. You can just have a guideline or a format where you can launch something from. By this information right here. This is what I want to show you, though. This is how it's good, good though. I all like down it. Down to down. Up, most so I don't think, all the way down to key. I'm not trying to discredit my man that's talking. This guy, I think his name is Matthew Otter. But um, I've been checking this. I think he, uh, I think he lives in L.A. Right. I picked this DVD up in L.A. I've been keeping it in my book for a minute then I thought you know what ain't nobody out there that can explain everything I've been saying better than this guy right here because he just break it down for real now watch he gonna show you this temple this old temple right here tell I'm common and I'm not I'm a hotel the third Queen T all these kings and queens are going back to this woman this black Ethiopian woman so let's chase this thing here's had chef said you saw her name on there they knocked her face out but See, what always destroy the faces this is what you call vandalism to, to hide the people responsible for this civilization. That's why this face was butchered like that. They tried to, what they did, they destroyed the Africoid features. But as you can see, these are the mad statues who's making of our women sitting on the throne. You can see the square right there that she's sitting on as ruler. So the patriarchal world is European. It has nothing to do with us as melanated people. That's why we as a people are so messed up. Because our women is messed up. So they're not raising their sons to be responsible. That's why so many black men is walking around dumb as hell, drinking alcohol, smoking crack, selling crack, pimping women, selling everything that's a bag of decadence. They are a part of it. Now this is our origin of greatness that we must return to. And this type of stuff right here with all this vandalism that then went on that made us become decadence with our old remnants. See these things right here were cities that were put in the middle of flourishing forestation where everyone went into the forest and gathered and brought it back to the city. And the city didn't deplete everything because of greed of the corporations just wanting to encapsulate people more and more into structures to make money off of extravagant rent quotes and rates. So let's go look at some more of this ancient stuff. And has Chef said do? Has Chef said built this particular palace in the cliffs by a brilliant architect Simba? Look at that. Levels. We can't say any see this mom right here? It ain't hard to figure out where they could have got the stone from to make that. You see, you got smart ass people who would be trying to make you believe that it was so hard to do this. When you can see the materials right there to do it. Right? But they'll make it so impossible for people on earth to be able to do this. They move the rocks, how did they move the rocks so far? They're right there. There are the stones right there. They probably cut them right out there. Plenty right there. But anyway, what I'm saying, my thing is they don't want to tell the truth about this because they have to tell to the world the horrible things they did to the god and goddesses of this planet that impeded this type of construction. Right? Well, Emulator M. Hotel, in many, in many respects, and in this particular temple, she wrote about her ancestral land, and she sent a, a. You can see the level. 